Hey guys, System here, and this is FTB Skies. I myself am having a wonderful day. Hope you guys all are as well. Let's go ahead and jump back into the pack and uh, push forward. And I guess in between episodes, the pack has been uh, officially released. You guys all have access to it on the FTB launcher. Give it a go. It's a good time. I have to say a big shout out to the FTB team because, well, they have done a wonderful job on the pack uh, release. So, yeah, good stuff. Especially Sarah. Just uh, knock it out of the park, man. Just a uh, good job all around. So, Anyway, let's go ahead and jump back into it here. I guess yesterday, too, I did not put a video out. I just was not feeling yesterday at all. I just woke up and was just like, yeah, I don't I don't like today. So I decided to take the day off and just do some building. So went ahead and worked on our mob farms, right? So they air cool and uh, pretty awesome. So, yeah, these are our mob farms now. They're not too bad. I need to deal with the experience in this one. It's not getting pushed forward. So in the back there now, I have fans because I made them a little deeper, right? So they're a little uh, wider than they were before. They are only like five or four. I think they're up to eight or nine now, but uh, these fans don't seem to push the items or the experience, so I'll have to add something, maybe some vector plates in there to push the items forward, but otherwise, pretty much the same. I'll just have to kind of tweak it a little bit, and uh, quite happy with this island. So the island is uh, pretty much done, right? So even the underneath, when I had to get that done, that bottom part took me about an hour to do, but yeah, this is a, isn't actually that hard to do. I thought this was going to be really hard to do. But basically, you just kind of build spikes. So you build, like, I built this line right here first, so straight down. Then I just kind of fill it out going down from the top. So, yeah, I was going to use the builder to kind of help me do that, but it seems easier to do manually. So I just went ahead and did that. Quite happy with that. Also, the materials I used were, these are willow. So that's from Hexery. Then there's this witch hazel. Then I actually used uh, packed mud from Minecraft. So that's the way I did that. So I need to deal with these guys. I keep forgetting. We could probably do that right now, actually. So if I go into here, uh, this button, right? Go ahead and grab that. We should be able to grab a Dread Lantern, right? Grab one of them. Yeah, I should have one of these in my life. How do you get Black Dye? Can I get Can I get that? I can. Go ahead and grab one of them. I don't know the area on this, but I think this is going to make it so passive can't spawn on this island. But they should still spawn from that grass, right? So I'll just put it right here right now. But uh, hopefully that works. I just want to make sure mobs are still spawning here. Yeah, they're still spawning in, so that's still working. Also, I added a elevator here, so down here, just to give me access to uh, our stuff underneath here. So that's uh, working out. Oh, I added my tree farm up there too, actually. So I have a little filter here to, uh, I guess, void off the stuff I don't want from that. Had an event with the villager spawning down here. <laughs> I just left them down here. Have a ton of ability bottles in here too. I have not sorted them all. Also, these guys are annoying. These hexery crows. You hit them the first time, then they kind of heal up and play dead. Then they come alive again. <laughs> so you actually have to hit them twice. There you go. Get rid of that guy. So yeah, that's gonna what's going on here. Should not have any more passes on this island here, though. So that's fine. Um, to use these two, you just need two elevators, and you stack them, then shift and space, go up and down. Then I did another building over here. So this is our main house, I suppose. So we have this one here. It's looking pretty rad as well. Kind of the same palette all around. Over here, these are doors from uh, Ad Astra. So I kind of like them. Then we got a little back entrance back here as well. So that kind of works out. And that's cool. I like the animation of these things and the sound. Look at that. All high tech. Not really useful, but at the same time, quite happy how the interior of the building turned out. So that, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty nice, I think. It's pretty cozy and functional at the same time, which is the thing you want with modded. And then our door walls actually are pretty, pretty uh, exceptional as well. So happy with that. So yeah, just spent uh, time doing this yesterday, just uh, getting this all done. And uh, quite happy of how it's turned out. It's not too bad at all. Still need to clear off the rest of the island, though. So we're going to end up uh, working on some crate and uh, this island over here. So we could actually start moving our pedestals that are crate stuff. And I want to get ramped up to uh, max speed. So that'll be probably what we work on first today. So that'll be uh, pretty good for us. And I'm uh, just trying to think if there was anything else kind of major here. I don't think so. Oh, I want to show you one thing, too. It's kind of creepy. This here, this four shear. Got it from my quest reward. If I go to the pig... <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here. I can actually shear the meat off him, and there should be uh, some, um, yeah, raw bacon right in there. And I think it works on most animals, too, so it works on cows and stuff, too. But uh, just, it's, it's a little strange that you can do that to animals. But anyway, that is definitely a thing. Oh, there's been uh, one more event added, too. So there's another event now. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I think I, I restarted the pack. I had one a couple minutes ago. But, um, uh, Basically what it does is uh, if you have chests kind of just, you know, sitting around your world, it'll say that a chest has been duplicated and it'll actually be a mimic. And when you kill it, you have a chance of getting an artifact, right? So I got two artifacts from it. Got this one, Thorn Pendant. 
Then I got another one down here. What I get here? Oh, the bunny hoppers. Increases the wearer's jump height and grants immunity to fall damage. The one I really want is this here. There's like a stake. Yeah, I saw someone, one of the other partners got this. So this eternal stake from artifacts with our auto eating, it'd be infinite food. You'd never have to eat again. You just put that in your bag, have that one steak, and just never even think about food ever again as long as you have your backpack. So I really hope I get that one, but uh, we'll kind of see how that goes. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, work on some crate. I guess we need to get uh, fine storage over on that island first. Then we'll kind of work on the crate stuff as well. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is set up a wireless, I guess, access point to our fine storage on the other island, right? So I have this here. I have a network receiver and a network transmitter. Those will be the two items we need here. Oh, we also need a uh, network card, don't we? I guess we need a little bit more of the quartz and wrench. So let's go ahead and grab that. Here we go. And that right there. And that should be good. No cables required. Let's go ahead and dig down here. I think I have an open cable down here. Yeah, that's where I set my uh, wireless transmitter. Go ahead and set the transmitter first down. Go ahead and just uh, pop that right there. Not sure how much power this takes. We'll kind of, you know, test that right and check that stuff. But just need to kind of get it set up over here first. I need it somewhere it's not going to move either. Um, maybe put it under the island. Yeah, maybe down here somewhere. Kind of central. Where's the uh, central point? Right here. There you go. And we'll just take the receiver and do something like that. And I don't think we can put this directly on the transmitter. So I think we need a cable. Oh, we can put it on there now. Go ahead and uh, put the, those in there. So we have a uh, 48 block range. Then we should be able to grab the network card, I think, and shift and right click on that. And that should set coordinates, right? Yeah, it says the uh, block it's linked to, which is fantastic. Then we should just have to take that and put that into the um, transmitter down here, right? And then we should be pretty much done. And we should have access to our inventory system uh, from range. Now, I'm curious about the power. It should show in here. Oh, that's not bad at all. It's only 64 FE, and these are 40. So, yeah, not too bad at all. We can actually afford that, no problem. Our entire system so far is only using 161 RF tick. We won't need this the entire pack either. So you go to, I guess here, it's a booster. It's that booster mod, right? Yeah, you have the infinity range booster. But I think this takes like, I can't remember. It's like 12,000 or 16,000. It's a lot of RF tech to be able to run one of these. And then there's the dementia card as well. I think that's another 12 or 16,000. But after that point, we won't need this stuff anymore. But uh, for now, we definitely need it. And let's go ahead and uh, see if it's actually working over here. Because if so, I should be able to just hit my button here. There you go. We'll have uh, full access to our fine storage while we're working. And uh, that's good all around. So, yeah, we'll be able to do our working on our island and not have to worry about it. So, really, really like that. Let's go ahead and uh, head back over here. want to get used to using those, too. I really like the fact that we can just get a teleport back and forth really easy. And uh, that is pretty rad. Also, I guess the next thing I want to work on is probably get into Create, right? So, we need to get into Create. My main reason to get into Create, too, is to be able to ramp up the speed of the sifters. But I think we're going to end up doing a boiler setup. I also want to try out this mod here. I've never seen it before. I actually went and looked at it at the download page, I guess. And it doesn't have any downloads because I've never seen it before. It's called Crate Ender Transmission. Must be a newer mod. But basically what it does, it makes it so you can take a rotational force and uh, make it wireless. So it's like, I guess, Flux Networks for, uh, <laughs> for uh, yeah, for Crate. So I definitely want to try out this mod. It takes 25 crafters though, so I'll have to get through that. But I guess we'll have to set up automation for the plates. We'll have to do plates. We'll have to do a little small automation for... It won't even be major automation. It'll be just kind of get it done today. Uh, casings as well. Uh, brass. It's the only way to get brass in this pack too is doing the mixing setup. So we'll have to do that. We're going to need a blaze burner. So, But uh, that should be a big deal. Then we'll be there. I think that'll be it. And then I guess I'll have to do a bunch of these things here too. These things are a little jank to do, right? Precision mechanisms. But I don't think we're going to need a lot in this pack, so I'll probably just do like 12 or so, kind of manually. And then, yeah, just going to move on with it. But I'll show you how we're going to do that. But I think that's the first thing we're going to do there. So I may go ahead and grab some stuff here. One thing I want right away, actually, is a toolbox. There you go. This thing uh, makes my life a lot easier. Which one is the default one? It's like the brown one, right? Yeah, what do I need here? Oh, you need plates. Oh, I don't have plates yet. Uh, we could probably do that with uh, one of those hammers. <laughs> Until we have the setup to actually do it the other way. Do that, go ahead and grab some gold. There you go. Then we just do that and that. Oh, was it this? It was uh, more expensive, wasn't it? Wait, can you not do gold plates? Did they disable gold plates specifically? Are you serious? Let me see here, iron plate. Did you really? I did iron plates at one point. Yeah, they specifically don't have gold plates. Okay, so we'll need the, uh, what is there? The press, right? 
Compressor, I think it's called. No, what is it called here? Mechanical something or other. Go ahead and hunt it down. Mechan. So we need one of these. We'll get this first, I guess. Let's go ahead and grab that. Then we'll go ahead and grab one of our uh, star buckles, right? There you go. Because that'll make it the easiest. And then we'll go ahead and grab a depot. Do that. I want to get the wrench of the goggles, basically, before we do anything so we can actually see what we're doing. But to get this going super easily, you just do that. And you pop that right there. So you just shift that on and automatically put it at the correct height there. Since we got one of these dudes, we could just pop that on the back. And that's already working. <laughs> that's actually super simple. Then I can just put those on there. And it's going to slowly make plates for us. I don't know if we can speed this up. Can we actually, like, make this jank? <laughs> Who needs a rotational force? It would let me make a bunch of plates here and uh, a couple things. But, yeah, that's pretty much all we need. That's not bad at all. It's noisy as heck, mind you. Yeah. Oh, it only made one. It doesn't actually work. Really? Ah, uh, no, we just get a whole bunch of noise and it doesn't do anything. So I think I have just about everything we need here. I just need to go ahead and uh, make some rose quartz. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Apparently I was doing some gold dust for upgrades. I'm gonna pull that out. Uh, this rose quartz, this is kind of like the base recipe. Then you go ahead and uh, do it in the enrichment factory really easily. Just uh, process it that way. You can uh, do it another way as well, I guess, with uh, great. But yeah, it takes the sandpaper and why, why, why bother with that, right? This way it will go nice and fast and make that for us really easily. I'll already need that in a couple minutes here, I think, for uh, the deployer and stuff, right? Which we can't make this second because uh, we don't have the other material we need. What is the other material? Brass. There you go. Uh, so what do I want to grab here? A fell pumpkin. So these are a really easy way to get blazes. So we have this blaze burner here. I need to get a blaze in it. I guess it's an empty blaze burner. We need to fill it up. But uh, these are from Batania and uh, they're really easy to make, right? So just that recipe right there. Then you grab some iron bars, just like this. Sweet. And then you just go ahead and put two of them down and just think you're kind of like making like a snow golem, right? Except for we're making a blaze one. Oh, I turned my hover off, didn't I? Let's go ahead and turn that back on. Sweet. And now we have that and we just do that and then we're done. So now we have a blaze burner, which is uh, fantastic. We also need some uh, coal here because I will have to uh, feed the blaze burner. That should be effectively everything we need. I'm just trying to make sure here. So we have that, that, that. Also, I made the, um, what should we call it here? This here, the toolbox. So this is the reason I wanted to make this. So you can kind of store a whole bunch of items. I guess I used to kind of automate create, right? And then you can hit this button and clear out your inventory very quickly. So it's really good in that regards. You can kind of do it wirelessly too. So you can set a hotkey to make it so you can do it like from like 10 blocks away. It's just, I don't have any open hotkey, so I'm not gonna try that. Also, I made the wrench here. So this wrench is really awesome too. So this wrench, uh, you kind of shift and right click. And yeah, it was just automatically break blocks from the mud. So that's cool. Also, I think we could put that in our morpher tool if I remember correctly. So that'll work there. And uh, we just go ahead and break this. Also, cool thing about breaking things with this as well. Oh, does it? Oh, I was going to say for a second, it was a left click, not a right click. I thought it wasn't going to work there. But yeah, it automatically puts the blocks in your inventory as well. So it's uh, really nice in that regards. So I think we have everything there. I think that's uh, pretty much it. Let's go ahead and head over to Island. Start doing some automations here, kind of getting this done, right? So we want the depot. We'll have a depot here. Um, also, we'll set up the press first, right? So let's do that. We know how to do that. It only takes a second, and it uh, should be really easy. Uh, where is my star bungles? Do I not have any? Oh, I put them in my um, toolbox, didn't I? Let's go ahead and uh, put this down. Go ahead and grab these guys. I think I got five of these guys, so we're looking pretty good there. Uh, we might be able to rotate that with the wrench. Let's see here. Will it recognize that? Maybe not, because it's from a add-on mod. Yeah, let's uh, not do it that way. It did break it, though. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and try that. That should uh, pretty much automate that. Not hard to uh, automate that one, right? Let's go ahead and uh, grab ourselves a chest and a hopper. We'll just uh, feed it from the side, I guess. And I'm just going to use regular hoppers. Yes, they're more expensive. But um, those other hoppers, if, like, if I just throw an item like from here, it ends up in the hopper. Sometimes it's uh, <laughs> aggravating, right? Anyway, that's good there. Then we'll end up with a chest down here, and then we'll end up with an item pipe. I did make some of the advanced pipe upgrades so we can filter, because you have to filter when you pull from these, otherwise it pulls what's ever there. Like if I'm making gold plates, it'll pull the gold and the plates, right? So we'll have to filter it there when we're kind of making the plates. Then we want to go ahead and set up the blaze burner. You know, the blaze burner. Also, I had to make a billstone, but I don't plan on using it, but it's good for making like dust and stuff. Uh, we're going to set up the blaze burner. This is for the mixer, right? So we'll need that. Then we'll need the basin. So this is the kind of 
uh, where stuff is cooked in it, basically like a cauldron. Go ahead and grab ourselves a mixer. Pop that right there. Then we'll have to get rotational force in that one. This one I think has to be sped up though. So I think if I disconnected, let's test that real quick. I think the base rotational speed. So there's rotational force, then there's like rotation speed. I think the rotation speed has to be faster on this one. So if I did that right there and break that real quick, then I just need to get connection there really quick. So we're gonna grab one of these gear boxes. These are really easy way to kind of reroute the rotational force. But that they're not too bad. We're gonna have to automate uh, casings as well. But anyway, go ahead, do this real quick. Just so I can get the force up there and kind of test this. Then I guess we'll need some shafts as well. I guess we'll need a small cog as well. So let's kind of get in a single trip here. But uh, we'll just do that and this right here. Oh, maybe that is working. Oh no. So I'm wearing the uh, the goggles. Oh no, I'm not wearing the goggles. Do you just have to have the goggles in your inventory now? Wait. Oh, it still tells it tells you without the goggles. Okay. Okay. I, I thought we had to have the goggles. Either way, I guess uh, you don't get the stress unit information without the goggles. But uh, it appears that this uh, mechanical mixer is not rotating with enough speed. So basically, we need to speed that up. So let's go ahead and uh, break that real quick. There you go. And kind of deal with that. I'll probably just automate this from the side as well. So we'll just do that. Do that. And that right there. And figure out how I'm going to gear this up here. Because we don't... Uh, how would I do this? Let's go ahead and grab... Actually, let's put it right here. Grab a star buckle. And see if we can get them going kind of like that. Sweet. And then big cog. Actually, if I do it right here... I, no, that won't work. <laughs> It's a little different with this one because the cog has to go horizontally, right? Let's go, let's go like this. Let's go ahead and uh, break you for a second. Where you at? Wrench it right here. There you go. Grab ourselves our star buckle. We go here. Then we'll do a big cog to little cog. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a big cog. And I already have my little cogs. So basically when you want to speed up something, you go big cog to little cog. If you want to slow it down, you go uh, small cog to uh, big cog. So that's how that works there. And now we can just use a gearbox to do this, but we need to switch over. Oh, actually, we already have a vertical gearbox. We do not have to switch over at all. We just take the vertical and pop that right there. And that should be at a enough rotational speed now to run in the machine, and we're not getting that air anymore. So that should work. Uh, let's go ahead and grab half a stack of that and half a stack of that. Where? We got one of those... Uh, chests around here the mimics i need to hunt that down i want to see what artifact we got it's probably at the base but uh anyway we'll, we'll see here because i don't see them on this uh very open island but anyway all i should have to do now is throw that in there throw that in there and give it some heat so you go ahead and grab it uh grab some fuel just use it on there i'm using blocks cool because they last 800 seconds but, uh, that should work oh it's just gonna feed the zinc in go faster there you go. So that'll start making brass. And once we have brass, uh, we are pretty much ready to go on to the next part here. We need a deployer to make the casing. So to automate the casing is not too bad, right? So it's this recipe right here. You have to do manual item application. So you basically make a deployer. So that's what I need the brass for. Then the depot, then you put the andesite alloy. You pump that into the hand that kind of goes up and down constantly. Then strip to it in the bottom part. And that'll make that, right? So once we get a little bit of brass, we'll get that done. So I went ahead and made us some uh, brass sheets here. And uh, I made this brass hand now that we can make the uh, brass, no problem, right? So we actually have uh, another stack of it, I think, done right here. So that is cool. It's uh, all made up. It made us a little bit of the plates, but uh, not too many. We're going to make the deployer. Also, that mimic spawned on the uh, machine down there, the um, builder, and then fell in the void. <laughs> that's what I think happened. So that's unfortunate, but... Maybe we'll get one here now that we have these chests here. Kind of see how that works just so I can show you. Uh, I want to do the, uh, I guess the automation for the andesite casings, right? So we're doing a uh, deployer. Let's go ahead and grab that. Grab ourselves the uh, deployer now, hopefully. Go ahead and do deploy. Hunt that down. Oh, I guess we just need an electron tube. Then grab a deployer. And then grab a depot. This one will be easy to power, so we won't really have to worry about it. Don't have to do any of that giant stuff. It'll work at the uh, base speed, right? So we don't actually have to do anything. Go ahead and grab a star buckle, pop it up here. That'll handle that. Then I guess we'll just need a hopper. Do you. And then we could just do another hopper. So in this one, we just give it the, I guess the alloy. So we'll do like 16 for right now. And then what do I, what casings do I need right now? I need to look at that. If we go into uh, create 
guess that's for these, right? So I need a whole bunch of brass casings. We're gonna need 25 of them. So I'm gonna need 25 brass agates and then 25 stripped. A uh, strip you could do, you could do an automation for that as well, but probably the easiest way to do that right now would be to just go grab some oak. So let's do that. Then we'll go ahead and grab another one of those uh, cutting boards. Sweet. And then we could just go ahead and uh, pump that down. And since we have a Paxel, put that in our offhand and do this right here. Now actually it's opposite hands, main hand. There you go. And just hold down, it will just automatically strip it for us. So that works out. We'll have to repair our Paxel soon too. There's actually the um, diamond anvil. I think we just give it RF. I think it says RF in that one. Is it RF or lava? Maybe it's RF and lava. I can't remember. But anyway, we need to make one of those so we can actually repair our tools. But you know, it'll be uh, something we do before too long. But now that we have this, we should be able to make those casings really easy. So grab that there. And I gave this andesite, didn't I? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, pull that out real quick. I don't want to make those ones yet. Nope, that's not right. It's so hard to target the hand once you have done that too. Oh, it's already pulled the items. That little black dot, I guess, I thought that was the andesite. Anyway, let's go ahead and grab this here. We thought we were gonna need, uh, like I said, 25, right? So let's go ahead and grab that. I see I have a stack of 50 up there. I know a lot of people are going, ah, oh, why didn't you just grab that stack? Then you go to split that one, but I didn't do it that way. And then I guess we'll just go ahead and grab ourselves, uh, hopefully if I can get a slot here, there you go. I guess 25 of this as well. There you go, and then pop that in there. And that should start making those casings for us as well. So that works out. Okay, so we got uh, one more automation here. Go ahead and uh, grab that. Go ahead and pop you down. Then we need to filter this again, because uh, it's a pain in the butt. It's just, they're so derpy. They're just not intelligent, right, with their exports. Also, I don't even think this one works until you uh, clear it out anyway. So let's go ahead and do this. That'll pull that in. It's gonna start pulling the uh, wood as well. But uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, throw a filter in, and then casings, and then we'll have to put the oak uh, back here. I think it was nine that it pulled, but either way, we are looking pretty good. I'll just put in 10 just in case. And uh, there you go, that's our casing automation. So that is cool. I guess the next thing I wanna go ahead and do is uh, check out this here. We'll make the crafters, right? And once we have the crafters, we go ahead and uh, make one of these wireless things. Or maybe we'll set up the uh, boiler first. What do we need for the boiler? If I was gonna do a boiler, we would need tanks, right? So I need a whole bunch of these tanks because maybe I'll go ahead and do a little bit of crafting here. So I totally forgot I was gonna need some of these too. These are the uh, precision mechanisms from, uh, I guess, uh, what mod is this? Great. I don't know why I totally forgot what mod I was working on. We're gonna need some of those because I need to make a mechanical arm. We're gonna need that. And what was the other thing we need these for? I think it was for the wireless itself, right? Uh, yeah, I think uh, not there and here. Yeah, these are gonna take up as well. So I need some of those. Also, I realized I made uh, too many of the brass casings as well. Um, we only need, I think each recipe makes three. So yeah, I made too many, but either way, I'll end up using them. But yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and manually make these. But basically what you do is uh, put down your gold plate, right? So kind of like that. Then you have to put everything in, kind of in order, right? So you do a small cog, and you do a big cog. Once it goes to that step, then you wrap yourself a iron nugget. There you go. You know, it's kind of changing there too. It doesn't look like a plate anymore, but you have to do that five times. And then at the end, it has a 25% chance of failing anyway. So yeah, it's kind of a pain. It has a little bit of a contention for some people. Some people don't like this mechanic, but definitely something you have to deal with. And uh, yeah, every once in a while, I guess 20% of the time, you're going to go through this entire process and it's going to break on you. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do, like I said, like a few of these. And uh, once I am ready, and once these copper plates are done too, we'll go ahead and do our actual boiler and our steam engines, right? Yeah, these things here, I have to make a bunch of these. Well, each one of these takes a block. Oh, wow, they're actually pretty expensive. We need like uh, 12 of these things, I think. But anyway, so I think I have uh, just about everything we need for this setup here, but I realize I should be uh, using some pasture seeds on this platform so we could actually get some grass here and it's not so just, you know, dirt. <laughs> anyway, good to uh, do that, let that spread around. So I made us 45 fluid tanks. I wasn't sure if we needed 45, 36, but I just went ahead and made the 45. Then nine more blaze burners. Then I also made a mechanical arm. So I have that as well. And then I think that's everything else. Oh yeah, the steam engine. So I have 12 of those. I think that's everything we need. And a sink, of course. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get that. Oh, I, need to, I need to move that. I meant to move that. I already moved it once because I moved the rain shield. We go. Let's uh, put that over there. I need to make sure we keep things dead center though for... Uh, you know, that's kind of where I want. I want a dead center, right? But we'll go ahead and grab the blaze burners and pop them here. 
We're gonna have a three by three of these. So they'll be kind of like this here, right? Then we're gonna have to have a way to automatically feed them fuel. So the way we're gonna do that, I'm gonna have to go ahead and set up our nether mob farm soon, but uh, not this second, but anyway. We're gonna end up, uh, I guess, feeding them with this here, the mechanical arm, right? So you kind of program this thing. So what you do is gonna shift and right click on this. This is the target uh, inventory. So it says take items from depot. It's kind of smart too. It knows that uh, the depot is, you know, where it takes items for. And you just right click on all the burners here. And that's gonna make it uh, to deposit items into the burners, right? So we'll kind of do that. And we just kind of put that down. And that thing's kind of all ready, right? So you see there, mechanical arm has one input and nine outputs, basically. We need to get some rotational force in that thing. You need to think about how I'll do that too. So part of this, we'll just go ahead and throw the star buckle there. Then we'll grab ourselves the, I guess a gearbox. We'll need a vertical. Let's go ahead and grab that. Then we just go ahead and pop that right there. And that should already be rotating. Then we'll just need a singular uh, cog here. And we'll go ahead and do that. And that should handle that part. Now, if I, I can kind of test this real quick. So I'm gonna test it, I guess, with coal for right now. So let's go grab coal. We're definitely gonna need our nether mob farm. I guess we could do it with coal for a bit because we have a, a good backlog of that, but it should start grabbing the coal and then feeding the blaze burners, right? And that's gonna be what heats up the water to actually make it produce the rotational force in the uh, boiler. So next part is to set up the boiler and we'll kind of let it do its thing there. Uh, we need to grab these fluid tanks and then we can just go ahead and get them kind of in a three by three on top of this. There you go. And once you do the first layer, you just kind of, oh, I thought you could just right click that on. Maybe not shift. Let's try that. Let's see here. I thought I did the entire layer at a time. Yeah, there you go. Three, I'm gonna do four layers at first cause I want to see if it was four or uh, five layers that we did, but I think that's good there. Then to get to uh, get it to actually multi-block, we need to grab a steam engine, right? So this is gonna be what actually produces the uh, rotational force in this thing. Just kind of right click them on. See there, right now, it doesn't really say it's producing any power. We need to get water to there. So that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna be using steam, right? It is a steam engine after all. So let's go ahead and get them all on there. Then to get them uh, to multi-block, right? The actual steam engines themselves, you have to just use a shaft on them. So we're gonna kind of have them like this. There you go. I think you can rotate these now too, before it was really hard to target them, but I'm pretty sure you could do it with the wrench now, where before it was like near impossible. So I'm just gonna do it kind of fast here. And we'll, I guess, rotate them afterwards. I end up wanting them to go like that. There you go. So you can make them go up and down, or uh, I guess uh, horizontal or vertical, basically. So that is good there. They're all connected. That is fantastic. The last thing we need to do, I guess, is uh, get the steam in here, right? Or the water, I should say. So we'll just do that kind of up here somewhere. That is good. Then we'll grab uh, that right there. Then we'll just go ahead and set the extract on that. See there, it's already starting to go. Can that keep up with water? Looks like it. I mean, we could speed that up really easily. I was just wondering if it would actually just work with just one, but it looks like it will. But just in case, I'll go ahead and throw an advance in there. And there you go. If we look at this now, it's producing 147,456 uh, stress units. So not bad at all. And that looks like it works. Yeah, that'll work just fine. I'll have to do a build around this. I have to do some kind of big building on here. Maybe just one singular building for this area. And uh, yeah, that works. And it looks like, uh, yeah, this is level eight. Will it go up to level nine if I do this? No, so I only did it four high. So yeah, was, uh, I guess, uh, more tanks than needed, but it doesn't hurt anything either way. That's cool, that's cool. You can make this like double this, uh, I guess, amount of uh, stress units as well, but you have to use blaze cakes on the blaze burners. I didn't want to go through that setup. So I guess that's something as well. Let's go ahead and uh, hook these up here. And then two, and then two. I want to go ahead and get all the stress kind of hooked up. So I think each one of these, let's go here, steam, yeah, steam engines, they can move 12,288, it looks like, uh, stress units each. Maybe a little more than that. I forget. I'd have to break one, but either way, I need to get them all linked up. So it's just like one singular source of stress. So I'm just going to do it like that right there because it's a really easy way to do it, right? So I just kind of link them all up here and all the arms will be able to produce, I guess, uh, not produce, but uh, share their power between each other, right? All the stress units. Then we'll end up uh, pulling that into the final setup, which will be with the um, the wireless, right? Right there. There you go. That'll be our setup right there. It's a little jank right now because we don't have any kind of build around it, but uh, it's taking the coal. It'll, I'll have to automatically feed the coal here. I'll go ahead and grab an ender chest here in a second. 
But uh, yeah, that'll stay, stay continuously powered as long as we keep fueling it, right? So do an ender chest straight from the drawer, which will work out pretty well. And uh, yeah, that definitely, definitely works. So yeah, that is uh, how you do the broiler. It's not actually that bad at all. Uh, I've got a loopy. I'm not going to worry about the loopy right now. So I went ahead and uh, just started pulling hole directly out of the drawer and going into this uh, ender chest here. I dyed the center button green, right? So it's on a channel. So it's on that channel, right? Then I have a matching ender chest over here. This one right here, pulling the coal out and putting it in the depot. I don't know why though. It's like not putting it on normally. If I pull it off and do it, yeah, it puts on four, then not more. I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. As long as it keeps putting it on there, either way, it doesn't matter. But I didn't speed it up or anything, so it shouldn't need it though. Like I don't think that changes anything. Maybe it does. I put on 32 that time. Yeah, I'm not sure why it does that. I think 32 is the max it can hold, but I don't know why without the upgrade, it's not putting on like the the max. It's like yeah, it's weird numbers. Yeah, I have I have no clue. No clue why it's doing that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll just kind of max it out here and pull it off. So I went ahead and made us a rotational speed controller. So we have this puppy here. It's going to make it so we can make the rotational speed coming off the shafts uh, really fast, right? So that's kind of the idea there. Go ahead and grab us a large cog and just connect that. So that'll be kind of the base speed. But uh, now that we have that, we can look at the side of it and speed this up. We're just going to go ahead and throw that to max right off the top. There you go. It spins really quick. And that should make it so we can make the crafters really fast. Because <laughs> uh, we're going to go ahead and set them up. These will end up moved, but I need to do the initial recipe here, right? So do that there. And I'm pretty sure we want these as well. So I'll just go something like that. Then the next thing we need to do is kind of set the path. We need to make sure all these kind of, these arrows, right? So these are arrows pushing in direction, go to a central area. So for right now, I'll just do this. It'll be going super fast anyway, it won't even matter. So they'll kind of go all down and then complete the recipe, make everything go together. Now I think this is the recipe here for those uh, wireless doohickeys. I forget what they're called there. Uh, energy transmitters is what they are. Go ahead and uh, see if we can get them kind of made here. What was the rest of the recipe? Shaft shaft, interpearls, precision mechanism, eye vendor. So, eye vendor. There's our interpearls. Then we want the shafts, I suppose, and then the precisions. Then we should have this done. So that is actually fantastic. It didn't really take that much time to get this done today. There you go. There you go. Got our first one. And uh, we'll need two of them if we want to see if they work here. I want to test it really quick, but yeah, just uh, really sweet. And after this point, we'll be able to automate great really easily. Hopefully, hopefully. I'm hoping it remembers the rotational force that comes up. Not the rotational force, but the rotational speed. It's going to remember the rotational force for sure. But hopefully it remembers, like when it goes wireless, the rotational speed as well. Because, uh, uh, yeah, that'll make our lives a lot easier if we could just send the force into it. And then, yeah, just uh, have the speed as well. There you go. And that should be good there. We got two of them. And like I said, I want to try this out. I'm just going to break this down for right now, too. Don't really need that. There you go. And I guess we could try it right here. Let's go ahead and uh, pop right there. Is that what it's supposed to look like? <laughs> that doesn't seem normal. What is this thing doing? Wait. Okay, so there's a shader issue. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. That looks bizarre. Does this one spin right away? How do you set these two? Is it like a channel? It is too. So if I put this on two, go ahead and do that. Yeah, that one stops spinning. Oh, it's glitchy even when it's not doing anything. Yeah, the shaders don't like this at all. But I could go ahead and set that one to two. There you go. So we can move it. Oh, I guess the other thing is to uh, see if it remembers the rotational speed, right? So let's go ahead and uh, take it. I want to pop it right over here real quick just so we can test it. Let's do, oh, can you switch tools? There you go. And do that. And, oh, maybe it needs a shaft? Oh, I didn't set the uh, channel, right? Because I changed the channels. There we go. And then if I want to make plates now, let's try that out. Let's go to, uh, let's just go copper. Just in case I want to make more tanks to make the, those tanks higher for, the, for aesthetics, right? And then I guess I could just right click this on too. There you go. We can just uh, move around, max rotational speed. No problem at all whatsoever. So that's actually really cool. That's a cool little setup there. It's a little weird with the shaders, mind you. There's, uh, that is not uh, what it's supposed to look like at all, but at the same time, it does the thing. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. So we have a uh, fully working, I guess, uh, I guess rotation setup for great, which is amazing. 
And uh, with that, I guess the last thing I'll need to do is, uh, like I said, set up my nether farm so I could use blaze rods instead. I think at some point we'll run out of coal. I just don't think the coal burns long enough. I forget how long the coal actually burns for. Yeah, it's not very long. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was uh, 800 seconds because we tested on this one uh, with a block. So it's probably like 80, and you get an extra one for using a block. But anyway, definitely a thing, and uh, pretty rad all around. So, yeah, we, we did the thing. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end up building a building here and uh, figure out how, what we're going to set up here. But I guess in the next video, we'll be able to come over here and uh, move all our sifters over here. So we're going to end up moving all those pedestals over there and all those sifters. We'll get them up to max speed. And then once they're max speed, and uh, I guess we'll have to speed these up as well. We're going to have to make these max speed as well to uh, feed them. Uh, we'll be pretty much done on the production side. So so I think I'm going to go ahead and actually end this one here. So as always, guys like this video, please hit that like button. I really liked it. Hit that subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys in the next video. Later.